Well, everybody, you're all looking good. Everybody's looking happy. And uh, that's always a good thing. So welcome to the Global Watch International Call. It's Tuesday, April 27th, 6 a.m. Jerusalem time. And this is the Break of Dawn prayer. And this hour is sponsored by the USA Watch with, um, surprise, surprise, Susan and me leading, but mainly Susan. And I'm uh, her, I guess, wingman or backup. And uh, so- oh, we've, got, we've got other facilitators here too, so. Okay. Uh, so who else do I need to mention? Well, was, we've got uh, <laughs> Peter Carlson with a big bright smile there, who is, uh, he has been the anchor for the USA Watch for years. And yes. um, in fact, I started, I spoke a vision out on it, uh, some uh, on a USA phone call. And a day later he called me and said, do you need any help? And he's been with us ever since. And Peter, we love you and we so appreciate you. You put more hours in on the night watch than any one of us here. So I really want to thank honor you. you and thank you for your support. That's very yes. kind. And Peter, you are and, totally a forerunner in the whole Zoom thing, which you had us do way back six years ago. And uh, we have never regretted it. It's always and I'll great. never forget how you trusted me to do that, Fred. Like <laughs> I knew that you were. Um, somewhat skeptical and so thanks for putting that trust in that yeah well i wasn't really skeptical i was just a little bit fearful and you were just like well let's do it right now let's you know let's go into it you know? yeah you did you you transitioned us that's for sure you did a great job and let's see we have our, our mountain zone one of our mountain zone facilitators julie wilson do you want to say hi to everyone hi everyone and um i see kevin wade hopped on too I recruited her because, you know, I was the first one on the mountain time. So what, five and a half years ago when grassroots, grassroots and um, Kibben came on with me. She was my right arm and she now leads on Tuesday watch. It's grown a lot since then. We've seen it um, every day filled um, since that was grassroots time. So that's a praise. It's yeah. been a blessing and a privilege. So there she is somewhere. I see her now, <laughs> given way. Yeah, I, I'm going to miss people doing this by pulling them out. I thought I saw Deborah Boggs on here. Is she here? She's not here tonight. Okay. I can tell you that. I, I just thought I saw her. her. Hmm. Yeah, she's not okay. here. Anybody else here? Speak up if <laughs> I, there's a sea of people. Uh, there are a number of da our day leaders, Sherry Rich, who is also helping us with the California Watch. Thank you, Sherry. Do you want to say hi? Hello, everyone. Good to see everyone's faces. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, just by Lena way of introduction. Lena has helped with the uh, Wednesday Watch. Lena yes. Mamajam. Yep. And just by way of introduction, with the, the USA Watch, how we've organized it is we've organized it through the time zones. And uh, one of our prophetic um, scriptures that have been spoken over our nation by one of the first martyrs is Psalm 132. And Psalm 132 is all about the night watch, the first four, four verses. And um, we've been a real proponent of the, of the night watch because of its power in the, in the scriptures. And so um, we pass the torch from five to six from East Coast to West Coast every morning. And there are um, groups of intercessors that take that call every day. So um, that is basically how the USA Watch functions. Um, many people can stay within their other formed communities to doing that. And it, but we see that there is a strength in it. Uh, some many people have been on there since day one and some of the um, core values that we hold on to were developed by the team that is uh, holding up the USA watch and so we are forever thankful for that um, uh, that is the backbone of the watch and I think it is a distinctive of the watch and how we how we handle each other and how we build one another up which is a little bit of the message tonight. Um, 
I do have a worship song, Fred, if, unless you have something you want to say, we should open up with prayer. It's, you, you need to unmute. We don't want to forget Linda Smith, who's on the call. Oh, yes, Linda. She's a big backbone here in California and for the USA Watch. Huge. Thank you. Love you both. Mwah. And uh, <laughs> and major proponent of Israel. Um, <clears throat> Linda's been to Israel something like 30 times, I think, haven't you, Linda? Well, I think about 26, but okay. I would have made 30 if they would open the doggone borders back up. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> open up, open up. Yep. So let's open up with prayer. Yeah. Okay. Linda, you want to do that? Linda, go sure. ahead. Father, we come before your throne tonight in total awe of who you are the privilege that we can bow before you and honor you and bless you and thank you for all that you're doing in the midst of even what seems sometimes impossible you are the possible and lord we thank you for tonight we thank you for where you're going to take us for how you're going to lead us and how you're going to direct us and we thank you for answered prayers tonight prayers that go out with sharp arrows that uh, and go in and put things ablaze and set things in order and establish it according to the throne of heaven. Lord, we bless each one on the call tonight. We bless Sue and Fred and all the leaders here. And we thank you, Lord, that we've only just begun and you're gonna take us from glory to glory. We refuse to believe anything but your word. And we honor you and with not only action, word, and deed, in prayer in every area, oh God. We give you glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you so, so much. The Lord um, says in Psalm 96 to sing to him a new song. And I found a new song tonight that fits with the message that we're going to be bringing. It's called Jaira. It was just released in March. So I'm going to share it with us tonight. And um, let's enter into some worship and, and prayer as we go into this set. Amen. Thank you, Lord, you're Jehovah Jireh, you're our provider, and you are enough for us. And we just thank you, Father, that you always provide for our every need. <clears throat> so we wanted to uh, just talk about this particular issue during this hour. And what we wanted to discuss was the fact that we're all facing every day now an onslaught of uh, negativity, an onslaught of difficult circumstances, fearful circumstances between COVID, between things that are happening in, in the governments that are, are wrong. Uh, and not only are we facing that, but we're facing just an onslaught of lies and deception and um, all kinds of things coming against us that seem to have accelerated in the past year. And the issue is, as believers, what do we, in discouraging circumstances, how do we handle ourselves? I just want to read this passage because it's one of my favorite passages in scripture about uh, King David and his mighty men when they faced some difficulties um, when they were returning to their homes in Ziklag. Let me just read it and then well, I'll just comment on it for a second and then I'll turn things over to Sue. So this is the scripture. It's in, uh, it's in 1 Samuel chapter 30, starting in verse 1. Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag attacked Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken captive the women and all those who were there from small to great. They did not kill anyone, but carried them away and went their way. So David and his men came to the city and there it was burned with fire and their wives, their sons and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives, Ahinoam and Jezreelitis 
and Abigail, the widow of Nabal the Carmelite, had been taken captive. Now David was greatly dis distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. And here's the key verse. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. That's one of my favorite passages because David had absolutely, he had lost everything at that point. And he even had his followers, his mighty men who wanted to kill him. So he had nobody, zero, no, all horrific circumstances and nobody to stand with him. But it says that he strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. And I, I love that. I feel like that's, that's what I aspire to. That, um, that I always know that I can strengthen myself in the Lord my God when things are coming against me in the worst possible way. And I certainly have not faced anything like what David faced during that time. But it just, uh, it just shows you that um, when we turn to the Lord, he can give us the strength that we need in whatever circumstances that we happen to find ourselves. So um, I just want to just bring that up. And, and Sue, um, I'm going to turn it over to you. You had a really felt like you had a word about this whole situation, this whole thing that we're facing today and spent some time going through the scriptures and even making a, a message about it. So if you want to unmute yourself and turn on your video. Um, well, yes. Yeah, your hair looks fine. You don't really have to worry about it. So <laughs> it's all good. It's a, been a hair raising day, uh, <laughs> um, but <laughs> We're here. We're here. God's uh, provided. He's Jaira. He's provided through the day, and we have finally landed tonight. But um, <clears throat> uh, I did want to just share from one passage. Fred, that's a that's a great word. I love that passage too, where David strengthens himself in the Lord. And I, I pray tonight that that is the message that we take out of tonight is that God is there. He's not left us. He wants to strengthen us for the victory. It may not look like the victory is there and the odds may be overwhelming, but um, I hope that when we come into those places uh, where we face the overwhelming odds, we will remember tonight and say that the victory is the Lord's. And he is, he, we are headed for times where it's gonna stress us a little bit. And that's why I believe God is pulling us together as watchmen to help strengthen one another on the wall. And that is our heart's desire behind this uh, movement. I believe it is a movement that God's calling the entire uh, prayer movement into to understand what it means to be stand as watchmen. And um, <clears throat> so I wanted to kind of take a look at Numbers 14. It's a picture of Moses standing as a watchman for Israel. And um, it's a setting where the 12 spies had just come back from scouting out the land. And we all know the story. Um, they all came back with the report that truly the land flows with milk and honey. Um, but 10 of them spoke of all the big, the opposition that they saw. Even though they saw the good things, they saw they really focused on the opposition. And how many times do we listen to the news and we, we get overwhelmed and it's like, I can't believe this. Only God can get us out of this kind of a thing. Well, these 10 spies spoke of the fortified cities, the, the descendants of Anak, the giants that are there, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites, and the every ite that you can think of are in that land. And they certainly cast a spirit of fear over the entire nation. And um, the fear drove the people to want to kill <laughs> Moses and uh, Caleb and, and Joshua. So here that that's the circumstance. Can you imagine? There's these three men. We read it in the Bible and it kind of goes fast over all this stuff. But it's three men and there's about a million people in all the tribes of Judah, uh, of Israel standing there. <laughs> and it's like they're right at the edge of the promised land and fear comes in to push them away from the very promises that God had given them. And, and um, in this story, there are four keys that I just wanna briefly go over and then we'll go on to breakout rooms to discuss some things and hopefully encourage one another. There's four keys to a victory. 
that I think are relevant for today. And in, in uh, Numbers 14.5, what happens is uh, when all of this fear comes over the people and they, they want it, they're pushing back and they're opposing them, Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. They fell on their faces to repent. And, and, and basically Joshua and Caleb followed by ripping their robes apart. There's these four men that were standing in the face of a million people in fear. Can you imagine the spiritual climate? But they refused to give up on God. And what did they do? Moses recognized the falling away, that they were at a critical moment and Israel was now taking a route that would not bring them into the promises of God. So they took that position of rending their hearts before God and before the people. Secondly, Moses heard the Lord what happens when they're, they've gone through this thing and they're crying out, don't do this. Remember the Lord, he'll bring us into the land. And the, the people just resisted and they wanted to stone them. Then suddenly what happens in verse 10? Now the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of meeting before all the children of Israel. Phew, God shows up just in time. But who does he speak to? Does he speak to the entire nation? He speaks to Moses and Moses hears it. And verse 11, he says, how long will these people reject me? How long will they not believe me? With all the, the signs which I have performed among them, I will strike them with pestilence and disinherit them. And I will make of you a nation greater and mightier than they. That would sound pretty good to me right then and there. But that's not the position that Moses took. Moses heard from the Lord, but what does he do? He takes a bold stance and he reminds God of the promises and the purposes of Israel. And what, what good would it do to destroy Israel if the Egyptians hear about it? What, what, how would that reflect upon him and his nature? That's a bold stance before the Lord to contend for the purposes of Israel and remind God of the promises. And so he also reminds God of his nature. In verse um, 17, it goes on. And now I pray, let the power of my Lord be great, just as you have spoken. The Lord is long suffering and abundant in mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, but he by no means clears the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation. Pardon the iniquity of this people, I pray, according to the greatness of your mercy, just as you have forgiven this people from Egypt even until now. That's a powerful stance. And Moses is reminding God of who he is. And what does God do? He turns and says, I have pardoned according to your word, Moses, not to my word, to what, how you have stood, Moses, I have pardoned them. That's a powerful stance of intercession. When we see nations going against God's will, how can we pray? God, what good would it do to destroy Germany? to destroy France, to destroy America, one nation under God, whose foundations have been biblical. What good would it do? What would it reflect on you? That's the stance that Moses took. But get this, the last thing that happens is that God sends his judgment on Israel and says for every day, that you have resisted me, you will spend in the, in the years, in the wilderness, and you will know my opposition. And none of you will go into the land that I have promised. But Moses led them 40 years in the wilderness. He knew the promises of God, and he was able to take 
that nation to the, to the edge of the promised land. And in verse 28, Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, remained alive of the men who were to spy out the land, to go in and possess the promises of God. Moses, Joshua, Caleb, who stood in the gap in that critical moment of decision, of doubt, where everything was, fear was taking away the camp, stood before the Lord, declaring his promises and de declaring his character. And they were able to, even in the spite of wilderness and living in judgments and all this stuff that they went through in the wilderness, they were able to go on into the promises. And that's something that we all must know that no matter how bad it gets or how difficult it might seem, we need to cling on to the promises of God because why? As we do so, there are things that will happen to us, that will happen to our children, that, will, that we will see God's hand of protection and his hand of provision that Jehovah Jireh bring us into the promises of God. And so that's the message tonight and in out of Roman uh, Numbers 14. And I just would encourage us all to um, be strong and of good courage in the face of the headwinds that we may be facing in our different nations and even in our uh, local regions. Um, we are here to support and to encourage one another. So Fred, you've got a couple of questions that I'd really like us to um, have some time in our breakout rooms. You, get, you need to unmute. Yes, I just put them in the chat. <laughs> and, uh, and here they are, the breakout room questions. Number one, <clears throat> what scriptures, testimonies, or practices help you when you are facing difficult or discouraging circumstances? That's question one. And question two, how have other believers helped you during these times? So that's a um, something that we need to to share with each other about what how we um, how we face things when we're when we're in difficult circumstances. So Sue, do you want to? Yeah. Take us there, into the there's, there's one last thing I'd like to say. It's the point one where uh, Moses recognized the um, nation was going astray. Listen, there's a lot of things happening now where social justice is covering up biblical truth and is leading the body of Christ astray. And the falling away is beginning, I believe. And so that number one of recognizing when we're going south is very key. So I would encourage us to pray for us to have eyes to see and ears to hear what the spirit is saying. So the things that sound good in our culture are actually things that oppose biblical values. And it's getting more and more so that day, what, what is right is wrong and what is wrong is right. How is that? Because these the social justice issues are covering over our, our the biblical truths and that's a falling away. So um, that's uh, an important thing to discuss as well. Okay, uh, we'll open up all the rooms and here you go. We'll be back in about what? Uh, by, by quarter two, maybe, or, or yeah. that's quite enough time. But we'll be back in 12 minutes. Okay, looks like we all made it back from cyberspace. Everybody looks even a little bit more of a glow about you. I think you spent some time in the presence of the Lord sharing testimonies, so it's all good. Um, Susan, let's see, where is my wife? I'm right here. Yes, great. Okay. So um, uh, Sue, we had um, we had one person after another sharing great things. I just I think that what we should do is uh, during this this the next few minutes, just have a, a couple people share um, just some key things that that yeah. that they did just share their share their their testimony a little bit just it has to be brief so we can have several people share and but, i'd like about five minutes at the end so we can pray for the summit coming up for the usa 
and let people know about let's that. Take, let's take about five or six minutes and just have people just mm -hmm. share real, real briefly. You can unmute yourselves one at a time. Um, can I just share one? <clears throat> uh, I forgot to share this just now. I will not have no time, but I find that the, the very greatly helped to be in corporate worship. And that really breakthrough, you get the breakthrough always at corporate worship. And now that we can't gather together, but we can gather in Zoom. And I have, we have tried uh, in, a, in a group, they tried uh, nearly, nearly 100 people open up their mic and corporate worship and prayer in tongues. And it worked. It can work. So maybe we could try that. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Jennifer. That's great. Great testimony. Go ahead. Somebody else open up. Um, we had a, we had a group that we really agreed that worship was a really good way, and then um, the unity, just feeling the unity of the brothers and sisters on the fourth watch, has been really, really key to keeping us just really, you know, focused. And then, of course, the one on time, one on one time with the Lord, and then one of them um, simplified her life and got rid of things that distracted her. And so she just made a real key effort of doing that. And I think that was really important. Wow. That's great. Wonderful. All right. Let's thank you, Kevin. Somebody else go ahead and just uh, unmute yourself. If everyone's too shy. I'm going to call on you. Well, for ours, I know on the number one question is what scriptures or testimonies or practices help you when you are facing difficulties. Everyone had a scripture, you know, when they were down or, you know, it was the word of the Lord. And it just reminded me of what David strengthening himself in the Lord, stirring. So that's, you know, what they found the most beneficial was stirring themselves in the, in the word and in the Lord and what he has to say and remembering that. Yeah. Yeah, clinging on to scripture is uh, is a powerful thing to hang on to. Yep, that's so good. Thanks, Julie. Somebody else want to just share briefly? We've got to, you're being so brief. We have time for a few more people. In our group, um, somebody, I have to find her to know her name, but took that um, in the numbers, took that further to remind herself how the Lord um, told David to go back that he would be able to get back everything that was lost and so she not only used the word to strengthen herself in the Lord, but to also remind her that there is an opportunity to you know to pray that way that that promise would be for her too that she can get back what was stolen or lost or, so that's one of the verses how she encouraged herself for that. oh that's great I, yeah that's 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 a good point that the story of ziklag and what happened there didn't end with everybody being taken away that everything everything came back they got everything back that's a that's a, a great ending to that story yeah amen thanks Lynn. and more and more and it took what philistine had as well so that's right that's right amen. Territory back. yes amen go ahead somebody else can share we have time for a couple more people well, our group also had scriptures, and a couple of them were the warfare scriptures, the weapons of our warfare, and Ephesians 6. Yeah. Um, we mentioned communion, and um, one mentioned uh, looking at the promises in his journal. So that was all good. Wow, that's great. Like prophetic words, promises, like things that you'd gotten from the Lord. Right. Yeah, wow, that's great. Great, great encouragement. Yes, go ahead, somebody else. Well, I kind of shared in our group that um, the Lord's really using the passage about him being the, uh, the branch and, and the vine and we're the branches and that he's just really working in me to teach me that he's not partnering with us, we are partnering with him. And that to really seek him and ask him what he's doing in a situation or with a particular person or what's going on in the world. And so he would reveal to us that we can pray what he would desire us to pray and just really knowing that outside of him, we really can't do anything and that we just need to be on total dependence on him. Yeah. So good, Sue. Thank you so much. It's great. It's a great word. We'll take one, one more. 
Um, I was also in Peter's group, but um, as, I suddenly, while we were talking, I had this revelation of the fact that Moses had had 40 years uh, in the wilderness being prepared before he even had to go in and do the 40 years um, looking after the Israeli people, uh, I mean, the Israelites, um, when he was looking after his um, father-in-law sheep for 40 years, um, and nothing is recorded as to how, he, how the, uh, you know, what, how, his thoughts were at that time and yet it must have been a great preparation for those other wilderness experiences for him yeah amen thank you joe all right oh it's great great testimonies we could i'm sure if we had another half hour we could hear it. everybody has something important to share sue rao um back to you okay Tell us about what's uh, what's coming up here well, a number of you are uh, in the journey group, and as we go forward in understanding more about the end times, um, just keep in mind numbers 14, because I, I've get, been getting the questions of why do we pray, you know, why should we have to pray if, you know, God's judgment is coming anyway, and all of this. But if you look at, at the scriptures and really look into the story, Moses understood the promises and he contended for it, and he was ultimately able to he was one of three able to get to the promised land. And um, same with Joshua and Caleb, they were actually able to go in. So it is worth it to contend and um, always contend for the purposes of God, no matter what the situation is. Um, we are holding a, a USA summit. I just, some of you, uh, <clears throat> I just wanted to let people know about it to pray for us. Um, why are we doing that? We haven't been able to meet for well over a year. It's been about a, a couple of years now that we haven't been able to meet. So um, we are taking the step now to move beyond the COVID restrictions and gather in Colorado Springs. Um, why are we doing Colorado Springs? Well, it's in the center of the nation. Um, the continental divide is there. Uh, Fred and I were uh, in about 20 years ago on a, you know, one of those prophetic uh, journeys <laughs> with people and had gone up to the Continental Divide and we were really led to, or he actually let, left his wedding ring there. And we, it was a very powerful moment where we remember, we really declared that this nation would never be divided. And that wedding ring is still there. And I, I feel like Moses saying, God, that wedding ring is still there. <laughs> this nation will not be divided. <laughs> and um, uh, so we're going to gather um, from the June 17th to the 19th. The 19th is a historic date, the last state in the Union abolished slavery. Then, um, uh, for those of you outside the nation, we are catapulting down a, a, a rather rapid hill of division in our nation. And um, so this is, this is a call to the watchmen to regather and pull us, pull together from the various streams and states and places where we, whosoever will gather together and to pray. And we're gonna do a land assignment at the continental divide. Um, how that looks, it's unfolding. Uh, our Native American watch is working on a document called um, Restoring Foundations. And it's based out of Acts 28, where uh, Paul lands in Malta and they make friends with the natives there. And what happens is a huge release of healing in that nation. And um, we, there has been, a, there has been a, a, a forgiveness prayer that has been released by the Native Americans several years ago in Washington, DC. But this is different. This is uh, restoring the foundations where we go back to the biblical foundations of why it's important to honor the indigenous people as the host, host people and how we are going to walk this out differently. Um, I am personally not going, I, I don't wanna go to another reconciliation service uh, without a walking out of the uh, issues that are spoken. And so this is a pretty serious call uh, to our nation, for those of you in the United States who are on this line, I would encourage you to take a look at it. It's called Reunited as One, 
It's on theusawatch.com website. You can go to it and find information on it. And Julie, I'd like you to speak into it. You are hosting us graciously again. And tell us a little bit about Colorado Springs and why it's important. Well, Colorado Springs, and you know, one of the most important things too is the beginning of the watch was the vision that Sue, you had had or encounter with God where you saw the United States, you know, where it was the eve of the ride of Paul Revere, I believe, and where the wake up call, you know, uh, where the spotlight was actually on Colorado Springs. Um, we are a high place in the United States and we have four military bases here, but not only that, we have, we house more of the headquarters of the world ministries here than anywhere, Christian ministries. And we are a blue or liberal state. What is that about? You know, so we are in a, you know, we're in a high place, but we're also in a, in a, a war zone, you know, spiritually and physically. So that division, I think that's really important. When Sue asked me about it, uh, and Sue, I don't, I don't know that you've shared that, uh, your pillar of fire with this group, um, but when uh, Sue was talking to me about it, um, I was like, okay, well, pray into it. I'm like, okay, I got up from in the kitchen and went to my deck. I just happened to look out. I was just prompted to as winter, you know, so I haven't been out on my deck. And there was like a pillar of fire over Pikes Peak is where we are, where America, the beautiful, I mean, it's America's mountain is referred to. And it was like that pillar of fire it was like a flaming sword, a pillar of fire just standing there. And I knew right then that was a confirmation um, of what we were to do here. So we will be hosting not just me, but the Gibbons on here. And I see Mary Dodson. There will be some other people, of course, uh, the Mountain Time Zone, wonderful watchmen that will um, help us put this together. But you are invited if if. If, if you can travel and we don't have restrictions vaccine. I just wanted to say that for some people have asked that question. Yeah. If, you know, we don't yeah. have that. So I, I would say just one prayer request as we release people tonight um, is to please pray how we walk this um, document out on the uh, restoring the foundations. Um, we need to reach out to other ministries and to have them take a look at it, pray for favor, um, and for more than just favor, but people understand the heart behind it. Amen. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, Julie. Um, okay, so we're at the end of the hour. Uh, listen, thank you, everybody, for your participation. And uh, we got some very encouraging testimonies of what people do and how they, it's important that we really encourage each other and that we we do cling to scripture, we do worship, we do um, uh, you know, remember the things that uh, God did in our lives in the past and that he's going to do them again. And um, so it's very, very powerful. We are going to need, um, probably we're going to need messages like this about once a month, I think, just so that we can just be continue to be strong, all of us. So um, Margo from Egypt, would you like to unmute yourself and just... Um, uh, close us off in prayer. Margo, are you there? I don't think Margo can hear us. Or maybe she's frozen. Okay. Well, how about Esther from Israel? Esther, would you like to close us off in prayer? Yeah. Yes, Abba, Abba, we're coming before you and we say that you are wonderful and your promises are amen, truth and amen. And nothing that you say doesn't, I mean, you mean what you say. And God, I bring you the USA before you, Lord God, and that the purposes that you have for America, that it will stand because, you know, people who came to the new land to bring, to be with you, to live what happens in New York. So, and God, I just pray that the union will be a free union with you, Lord God, and acknowledging the people of the land 
Lord, and it will be just one spirit, and that you broke the, the wall of division and bring them in together in truth and in love with you, Lord God. That's the key is to love one another because that's the way that you know people will see and glorify your name, Lord God. And I just pray about to break the lie. Uh, over America, and uh, that just that will be back to one nation under God. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that prayer. Those prayers from Israel. All right, everybody. It's going to be good. God bless Let's, um, you. Everybody, unmute yourself. Just bless each other. I love you. I bless, bless you. Love 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 you.